any idea why there's this sometimes very long gap between the lyrics and the music? And what might have sparked you off in 1996 to say, ah, I wrote that in 82, here comes the music? Well, it's a good question, Matthew. I wish I knew the answer. I think it's got something to do sometimes with a circumstance you find yourself in. I was working with some very good musicians. And I've, I've been starting to write at that point with, uh, for string bass as well, you know. And um, I think it was just part of the musical expansion that was happening at the time for me. And a feeling of freedom that the song could have. I tried it in other ways, and of just a feeling of freedom that the song could, could live the way it wanted to live. And you just got to kind of wait. I don't go, go nuts if there's not a... If there's, if a tune doesn't want to happen, I sort of feel as though it will eventually, even if it takes 40 years. <laughs> but I can be slow. Yeah, okay. So, t talk a bit about Bad Straits. I mean, an extraordinarily successful band. You didn't want me to give you statistics and tables and everything, but uh, a band that had an enormous impact during well, the period. Yeah, what happens is that. You, you know, you become a. I realized I was becoming. I wasn't. You, it's the way you think of yourself. I thought of myself before as a bit of a strummer, and I really, as far as guitar, really, that's all it is. But uh, the songs, as you become a songwriter, you start to think of yourself as a songwriter slowly as you put a few songs together. And the songs just started pushing a little bit hard. They wanted to find a home. And I, and I was still teaching at the time, and I just thought, well, I've I've got to try and get a little outfit that can do that. And it was a real stripped down outfit. Um, you know, my, my brother and John Elsley was living in a flat in South East England, in South East uh, London in Deptford. And I used to drive down there and uh, where Dave and uh, John were living. I used to drive down from where I was living up <clears throat> more in the North East of London and drive around, go through the Blackwall Tunnel, get down to Deptford. And, um, and started a stripped down little band, we, you know, and we just put some under, you know, carpet felt uh, in one of the little rooms. And the neighbours, uh, in there was a block of dead flats where we, where they were. I soon moved in, and uh, they didn't give those flats to proper people. They gave them to musicians and uh, uh, and students and so on and so forth. And, social workers and that sort of thing, how they're depraved. Uh, well, probably quite a few people from Newcastle as well. Yeah. And, uh, and certainly what, you, you rehearsed there, we rehearsed you remember? There. And, and we, it was actually funny when I actually met John, who's still a great mate of mine after all these years, is that, you know, one of the things that I perfected uh, with the guitar was falling asleep while playing. And when I got to, um, when I got to uh, play with Chad Atkins, you know, he told me that he did the same thing. And uh, 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 it's pretty late at night. And as as, you, as, as you, your fingers are going through, it, you start to nod off, but your fingers keep going. But you slide, you start sliding down this way, which is why if you're smart, you station yourself in an armchair or something. But slowly you come off the chair and you get and you end up. <clears throat> on the floor with a guitar underneath and you'll wake up uh, in the morning with or some some stage in, in, in like with, with this guitar on top of your chest <laughs> and you've actually slid down there, unconscious and John is six foot three and when I met him he was very vertical. He'd been out all night he came in and that's how we met. And I was flat I was I was horizontal and John was very vertical. Uh, <laughs> And um, uh, that's how it started. Uh, but yeah, we, you, we just organised our own gigs, and and we, we we pretty soon got playing around pubs and clubs, and and uh, and we made a little demo of some songs at a little eight track studio, in which included songs of swing. We didn't know what to do with them. I I suggested that we take them to Charlie Gillett, uh, who had a, a program on called Honky Tonk on Radio Lon London, and. Um, and he, we were helping a friend move furniture, in fact, that Sunday, John and I, and, and they said, 
you know, didn't you hear, you know, didn't you hear the Charlie played songs on the radio and everybody then was the, what were you doing when? And I originally had it, I'd originally had it, you know, as a, as a, um, one of these sort of open chord things, you know, on a completely different tune. But when I heard, when I had, I, uh, you know, when I got a Stratocaster, when I, cause that's when I got a Strat, coincided with a Strat, and I heard, I heard what the Strat sounded like. It just, you know, it was just the sound of the guitar. I changed, you know, I, the music came really from the instrument. So when you play, again, you know, that bubbling thing was starting to happen because of this rule breaking, because the, you know, the, with, the, with, the, with the thumb on the bottom of the guitar and the fingers at the top, I wasn't enough, so I started breaking the rules and started playing fingers and thumbs on the top, so, and the bottom as well, so, so it becomes like a kind of banjo playing. You know? So it, it's bubbling. <laughs> And you know, and getting back to what you're saying, Matthew, about books and and uh, crashing into to, to songs. Uh, uh, an example just just occurred to me where I was reading um, Mason and Dixon, uh, uh, the Mason Dixon, the Thomas Pynchon book um, that I'm sure a lot of you will have read. And uh, I, I I got into it. I've, I've worked my way into it, and. Um, Mason, of course, was a was a Geordie, and I thought I like that that, that these guys, these lads from England, had had all these adventures together. That they, you know, they'd been to South South Africa, and, and they were now engaged in this, you know, cutting this massive swathe across the wilderness, uh, an attempt to uh, to make a, a a boundary, and and because I was reading the book, and because. I was flying into Philadelphia on a plane. I looked, looked out and could see the conurbation and, and the whole of the, the modern, what we've done, you know, this world with these massive liners in the port. And, and, um, and again, this is an, uh, uh, an example of where, where something I'm reading crashes into this great job that I have, which is being a songwriter. You know? uh, are you, are you okay for a bit of uh, sending to Philadelphia, guy? And I 
and I just heard, I heard, um, just James Taylor's voice for the for the other character. So it's really like casting a. Um, it was a little bit like. Casting a